In this video, we're going to be talking about the integrating essential skills category of percent and ratios. So let's get started here with percent. And anytime we're talking about percent, it may be easier for you to think about, we're talking about something per 100. 100 is a good round number, and so we're lucky in that percent is per 100. So when you're talking about 24%, you can also think of that as 24 out of 100, or 24 one hundredths as a fraction, and you can even reduce that down to 6 over 25. So a lot of times in order to be able to do calculations on your calculator or even to, to do them by hand, when we're working with percents, we need to change the percent to a decimal version. So to do that, if you're given a percent and we want to get a decimal, we're going to move two positions to the left and you drop the percent sign so it becomes a decimal. So again, if we're talking about our 24%, we're going to take that decimal point at the end of the 4, move it two places to the left, and it becomes 0 0.24, a decimal. And that's really what we'll use in our calculations. Now to convert a decimal to a percent, if we want to move backwards, we're going to move the decimal two places to the right, and then we're going to add on the percent sign. So here now, converting 0.325 to a percent, we're going to take that decimal point between the 0 and the 3 and move it two places to the right, and this will convert this decimal to 32.5 percent. Now remember, percent is a piece of the total. So usually when we're talking about the total, that's 100 percent, or in decimal form, it is 1.0. So a percent of that is a piece of that. And like we had mentioned earlier, to do any kind of calculations, we're going to need to convert that percent to a decimal or even to a fraction. It will depend on what is given to you in the question, which one of those forms you will use, which, which one is easier to work with. The important thing to remember anytime you're adding or subtracting or multiplying and dividing, especially when you're doing it by hand, you need to keep your decimal points in the correct place. Make sure if you're inputting them into the calculator, of course, that they're in the right place too. The calculator will do all that calculating for you, but it is important where the decimal point is. Now let's look at a few applications that make use of percents. These are common applications you could very well see on the ACT. Anytime we're talking about sales tax or price discounts, like with sales tax, it may be a 9% sales tax or a 10% sales tax, you're going to want to convert that more than likely to a decimal. 9% would become 0 0.09. Price discounts, it may be a 25% off sale, so that's going to convert to 0.25. Sometimes when we talk about sales commissions, like if a person makes 30% off of whatever they sell, that would be 0.3. Polls and surveys also make use of percents when we're looking at how different people may have responded to a survey. Those responses are parts or pieces of the total. And similarly with studies with different samples and things. So it's just the idea of being familiar with percents and being able to do those conversions. So these are different applications of these that could show up in word problems. Now let's take a look at ratios. And what we mean by a ratio is that it is a comparison between two or more values. We can express ratios in two different ways as a fraction, and again, we're talking about part to a whole, or we could use a colon or the words T-O, too. This is a part to a part, so the two different ways we can express them. So for example, if you say 18 out of 27 students polled prefer pizza over chicken nuggets, okay, as a ratio, how we can express that, we could say 18 out of 27 students prefer the pizza over chicken nuggets. We can reduce that 18 over 27 to two, two thirds or two out of three students. And that's normally how you would see it in a reduced form. You could also see it in the form of two to one. And even though in that first case where we have the use of the colon, when we're reading it, we usually read it as two to one. So of the students polled, pizza is preferred two to one. So again, for every student 
For every two students that prefer pizza, one student is going to prefer chicken. So again, even as we're reading that, you can see that we're looking at, we can infer from that that if we had three students, two students would prefer pizza and one would prefer chicken. So we can get a lot of information out of a ratio. And that's what we're talking about here when we're using the part-to-part -part comparison. The numbers add up to a total that is used in whatever the sample may be or in the results there. So we had the two to one, we add up two plus one and we get three. And just as a fraction can be reduced, we reduce that 18 out of 27 to two thirds. We can do that in a part to part ratio. We can reduce them like here, even we have the two to the six to the 10. That is the same as one to three to five. We divided each of those components of the ratio by two. And also vice versa, we can increase those by a factor, a multiple. Um, in the first case here, we multiplied each of the, the values by four. So now let's take a look at an ACT type example here. Pause the video at this point, work this problem, and then come back and we'll work it together. Okay, Joe cut a 40 foot long board into three pieces. The ratio of the lengths of the three pieces is five to six to nine. What is the length to the nearest foot of the longest piece? The way we first worked this problem, we took the ratio that we were given, the five to six to nine, and added those up. Remember we talked about we could add up the part to part components and we get 20. Now we know that the board is 40 feet long, so we can take the 40 feet, divide it by 20, and we get two. So that's our multiple. We'll multiply each ratio piece by two. So we're asked for the longest piece, which corresponds to the ratio component of nine. We'll multiply nine by two and get 18. So 18 is our answer. Now here's another way that you can think about working the same exact problem. It's very similar. You take each component of the ratio, the five, six, and nine, and we put an X on that, a variable. And we set that equal to the total length of, in this case, the board, the 40 feet. And we're gonna solve for X. And we get that 20X equals 40, or X is gonna be equal to two. So now we're asked again for the longest board, which was the nine. So we're gonna take the nine times two, and we get 18. So in both, with both methods, which are very similar, we come up with that total length to be 18. 